Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Wowhead Weekly number 63, 64, 63, I'm not sure, 60-something. This is the first episode of 2016. How exciting. And we, we do have quite a bit of quite a bit to talk about today. We took a couple weeks off for the holiday. So without any further ado, I would like to introduce my lovely co-host, Wowhead site manager, Perculia, and Pepe. Hey, everyone. Pepe and I are very happy to have the first show of 2016. We had a few weeks off with winter break, and we all hope you had great holidays. And we don't have the alpha back up yet, but we do have some news to talk about. Yay. So let's get right into uh, that, but maybe 2015 first. Yeah, I mean, we both did year-end reviews. Perk did one uh, recently for all the things that happened in Wowhead, and I did one for the things in World of Warcraft itself. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. I'll talk about the WoW hit highlights first. Okay. Um, we had a ton of stuff to do on WoW in the past year. Um, you know, we started off with Warlords of Draenor being pretty recent and, you know, just came out November 2014. And we ended with Legion that had just, uh, you know, data mining started in November 2015. So in between there, we had a bunch of cool tools. And just to highlight a few, uh, we launched today in Draenor, which is something that shows you all of the like daily quests and vendors in your garrison that are up each day and all the pets. So that was like our one really big tool we launched then. And we also expanded the profile to track a bunch of things like followers and toys and ships and heirlooms and probably some other things I'm forgetting. Oh yeah, archeology span projects. So that was another big thing we did. And we, uh, the biggest thing I think which most people know is for uh, the most popular tool is the Drainer Pathfinder tool. So you go to wahoo.com slash flying, you see what you have to do to still get Drainer Pathfinder, and there is guide links everywhere to help you get through with that. It has little percentages, and everyone really loved that one. Yeah, that was a and very then, useful yeah. tool. My favorite one is the dressing room, though. It's you just go to the dressing room and you can import your character and change their hair and their color. And the really cool part is that you can dress them up in any transmog and you can even pose them on a mount and you can save it for later on. So before on Wowhead, you could just sort of make sets and see what the set looked like on, you know, just a generic human female or like, you know, orc male. But now you can actually import your own character and then see what it would be like if, you know, you change their race or preview a shop mount if you don't want to spend the money and you're curious what it looks like. So that was my favorite tool of 2015. Um, and then some other stuff we did, which was not tools, was we had the 10th anniversary party for Wowhead Yay. at BlizzCon 2015, which we're both part of, did a lot of work on. Go team. Go team. <laughs> yep. We had um, a claw machine, which had a bunch of Pepe's in them and other plushies. We had gigantic plushies from Blizzard's headquarters there. We, you know, we had the really awesome stream. We had a ton of people watching. Thank you so much. We had a gigantic cake with this rocket topper on it. We had like tons of like prizes and golden Funko Pops and like action figures and Jinx bundles and loot crate for Hearthstone and tons of really awesome stuff mm -hmm, at the mm -hmm. party. So... That was awesome. And then to close out 2015, we had the Legion database um, going live. We got that up really fast, and we had a bunch of cool tools that went along with Legion, including the talent calculator and the PvP calculator, and finally the artifact calculator, which does a bunch of cool things that are pretty unique, as well as opening up all of the different appearances of the different styles of weapons you can get. So, yeah. Yeah, I even really, the druid yeah. stuff. Yeah, we just added that in. Very exciting. Yeah, yeah a ton of stuff happened on Wildhead this year. And uh, a lot of stuff, it's funny, because I feel like a lot of people think that this was the, like, year of non-content. Yeah. But in going through and making a video of everything that happened in 2015, like, a lot of stuff actually did happen in WoW. And before I get into all the individual things, I really wanted to do this as, like, a discussion topic. But, of course, yeah. when the year started out, it was still technically the 10th anniversary of World of Warcraft. Because yeah, that they event, extended that. Yeah, yeah, that event lasted, like, two months. Um, but during that event, there was a battleground that was Terran Mill versus South Shore, and it was pretty popular. People really liked it. And I was talking about this on Twitter the other day, and I would love to hear your thoughts about it. Why why don't they bring this back as a permanent battleground? Because I feel like a lot of people right now are so upset that there's no new battleground in Legion. They've got this fully developed battleground that people really, really liked, and it had all this nostalgia behind it that's just not part of the game. It's not even like they're bringing yeah. it back for other anniversaries. It, yeah, so don't this... quote me on this, but I thought there was, I don't know, a blue tweet or something where people were like, hey, this is really cool, kind of return, and they're like, hey, you know, maybe it could be something returning for every anniversary. And now it didn't, it didn't. but yeah. I thought, I mean, I don't see a problem with that, plus 
I know it was really good if you're working on those gladiator sanctum uh, kills for Nemesis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, Astrian can be buggy now and then, and there's queue times, and apparently there was a holiday bug where Savage Snowballs were messing things up. (laughs) Um, But, so, yeah, it seems like that would just be, I don't know, like, a different alternative and a fun alternative. Um, Especially if, you know, Sylvanas and Gang Greymane and that whole area is meant to... Yeah. Have an increased focus on Legion, you could actually say, hey, for new players, this is what South Shore actually was. It's yeah. supposed to be ruined. Well, and it's like, even I saw a lot of people saying, well, oh, they wouldn't do that because it was like a very imbalanced battleground, but they could just put it in as non rated and it could just be for fun. It doesn't necessarily have to be for something that's of super competitive yeah, I nature. I mean, it, wasn't, it wasn't rated in um, for the anniversary, yeah. it just was there (laughs) it was just there and for fun and um i don't know i would be interested in them revisiting that topic because really honestly like what a waste to have that come out and then only have it be for that two month period and you know if we had seen it come out with the 11th anniversary i would understand like oh this is something that's going to be special every year just for a couple weeks which is cool but to not have it come back and have it only be that one time it just seems like why did you put all the time and resources into that and then have people really like it just yeah, especially <laughs> because um, I was thinking how with um, the Flames of Ragnaros that originally was the super rare drop from Molten Core, and they then put it in the uh, one of the rewards for Wintervale, and now they're like, oh, we're going to move it to the stolen present next year so people can still have a chance of getting it regularly. Mm-hmm. So I can see them saying, hey, Molten Core, maybe that was a little too nostalgia, and let's not bring that back every year, and they made the rewards accessible through another way. So it, it just it just feels like Terra Moon versus South Shore was like low risk. You weren't stuck in there for three hours. You yeah. didn't have to do it to get you know a pet or a, an enchant at the yeah. end. Of oh, it. I it totally, just, yeah. I totally understood the raid being a very temporary yeah. thing. It was clearly not, and set you up. can still do it. You like you can still run Molten Core. Like, yeah, you can still experience. Yeah, the and I thought of the Core Hound Mount. And I would even say if they don't want to put the titles back in for the BG, like, that's fine. Maybe that was only for the event. It just seems silly. You hear so many people being so upset about the Battlegrounds. And it's funny because I asked my audience about this and I've asked on Twitter about people and why they were upset about not getting a Battleground. And I feel like I've very much changed my stance on it because when I first came out, I was like, you know, Battlegrounds don't expire the way that raids do. They don't necessarily need a new background a new a new battleground and like but I completely also get the idea of regardless if it's the exact same game type why not make a new map or why yeah, not revamp also, it an might old be map. good for casual you know more casual PvP if people are scared of you know something that's rated or yeah. you know something more organized they can just actually you know wade into something <laughs> Well, and, especially uh, with yeah. um, especially with like prestiging and all of these new PvP rewards it just seems like I I even understand them not putting the resources into developing a brand new one, but bring back the one you already made, man. (laughs) I would be totally fine with that. Yeah. They brought back so many raids, like Zul'Gurub and Zul'Gurub. I know. I know. And, like, those had great rewards, like the the tiger mount. That's, like... Yeah. I'm working on a video that's the best cats in World of Warcraft. I know nobody's... Oh, that's so cute. (laughs) Nobody's surprised by that at all. And I did a whole section on, you know, the tiger that's from Zul Amon that now is the panther, and you can get, like, the battle pet that's similar and the raid, or the hunter pet that's similar and all these things, and it's just... You still see it. I'm sad because there's no way of obtaining that, and it's gone now, and the panther is not nearly as cool, but... Back on topic, let's talk a little bit about what actually happened in the world of Warcraft this year. Uh, Of course, we just touched on the 10th anniversary, which lasted through mid-January, and it had the rewards for Molten Core, the titles from Terran Mill vs. South Shore, the Molten Corgi pet that everybody got just for logging on. Uh, But a lot of other stuff happened, too. Uh, The beginning of the year, Blackrock Foundry opened, I believe that was in February, um, and that was was a pretty big raid. And uh, shortly after that, we heard that there would be no flying in World of Warcraft, (laughs) straight Straight from the mouth of Watcher Dev, and it's funny because it wasn't but two, three weeks maybe that then they yep. announced that there would be flying in the form yep. of Draenor or Pathfinder, uh, which was a really good yeah, thing. And there to was hear. much rejoicing. Yeah, no, yeah. I think it's a good thing that they took feedback and they went with it, and that also ensured us that we would be getting Legion Pathfinder in a similar way to obtain flying. Uh, also, World of Warcraft was inducted into the World Video Game Hall of Fame, which was particularly exciting for me because the Museum of Play is like 10 minutes from where I live. I haven't been yet. Because it's, you should. I'm yeah. going to. I'm going to. But it happened in the summer, and I didn't want to like right. have to be there with all little kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, then shortly after, Hellfire Citadel opened. I believe that was in like late August. And that was late. Uh, early July. Early but they ju- oh they, they really staggered it, so it took forever to. 
actually fully unlocked. I know, but and it makes me sad though because it's like I know we it's talked been a while this before. It feels like like my guild is we're not even good, and we're like seven out of thirteen mythic. And I can't imagine where these guilds are that are thirteen out of thirteen mythic. Like, what are they gonna do for another six months? What yeah. are they gonna do? <laughs> and then the last thing, of course, that happened was that the Legion Alpha went live, and the way that they staggered content for that was pretty cool too. Because when we first got the Legion Alpha, I I was in like the Mystic Pandaria beta, and it was very playable. Like day one, you were questing as if you were, you know, level ninety yeah. questing to one hundred. Whereas when they released the Legion Alpha, it was only the Demon Hunter starting area, and then we slowly got a little more, a little more, a little more, which is I think a better way to handle the whole situation. I'm excited for it to come back. It's been on break. For the holidays um do, do we know what day it's coming back no we don't really know yet there's been a few um qa tweets where people have said we don't have any eta we really want it to be you know polished and with new content when it's going to come back up so oh. i'm fine with that like it ties into how they don't really want we only had we only had a limited number of classes at first so i guess they didn't yeah. want people to play things that were buggy so it makes sense they wouldn't just you know, throw it back up with old content and, you know, maybe some bugs. And, I want the Overwatch yeah. beta to come back. I know this is, like, not a relevant time to talk about it, but, like, I didn't realize how deeply addicted I was to that game until they took it away. And then I'm just, like, every day I Beta's part it. of their plans. It's like, oh, you know, getting too comfortable with this. Or yeah, well, I, I Not do, sure if you want to play it every day. Well, now we'll make you think about it. <laughs> I do videos for Overking, too, and uh, that's Wowhead's sister site that's Overwatch. And uh, it's funny because they've released so much information while the while the alpha or right. beta has been down. Like I made a video like in the middle of the time, and who yeah. knows, I might make another one because they just keep launching new stuff and releasing new stuff. And I just uh, yeah. they're doing a progression system that I'm super excited about. This is not relevant. I just have had no one to talk to. Okay, <laughs> Kirk's been gone for like two weeks. That's my only friend. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, also going on right now is in China, there is a Warcraft movie. This was super cool. Exhibition. This was big news over the holidays. Like, I yeah. didn't think there was going to be any news. It's like, whoa. Yeah. We have stuff. Yeah, check so, it out. Look at these yeah. pictures. This is so cool. I know. They had some of this stuff on display, not all of it, at, um, like, New York Comic Con and San Diego Comic Con and BlizzCon, but not as in-depth as this as this is. This is this is a huge display. Now, where is this on display in China? It's called, um, I think it's a mall. It's called um, Joyride, and it's in Chengdu, China. Oh. And it was described as an exhibition that would have the lifelike character statues and uh, over 150 props, costumes, and weapons. And a literal quote is, this is the biggest free movie-themed exhibition ever mounted in China. So it's a pretty big deal. It's look at how casual everybody is around it. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I would be all about this. This is really cool. I hope to see it like traveling to the US because you see all sorts of cool things. Like, I'm not really sure whose armor that is. Is that Corona? I'm not sure. Some of these pictures were taken from Legendary Site, and the others, as you can tell by the watermark, are from this uh, Chinese site that went there and took photos. So it was a little hard to decipher the captions, what they were. When it comes you know, back around, up. I think I'm going to yeah. tell you what I think some of them are. Some of them I okay. know, and then some of them I'm not entirely positive. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure, I mean, these are obviously the horde, the tents that are in. I love the Alliance area. Like, the that Alliance is so stuff is awesome. It really, really is. I'm very excited for this movie. Um, I wonder if people got to walk up in there, too, or if that was, like... I think there were some pictures of someone actually sitting in the throne room, so, yes, I, I want a picture. I want this to go to, like, this is definitely Boston. This is definitely Medivh. Yeah, I'm I pretty so. sure that's Garona. It looks pretty feminine. I'm not yeah. sure who that is. No. That's definitely Cadgar. Oh, yeah, I think so. I think that's, that's right. That's all I know. That's all yep. I got. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i just i would love to see this in person i also like how it wasn't just the typical um you know statues of guys in armor but with 150 props and costumes and yeah, weapons you're they going had to the see doom hammer and everything. everyone yeah so really, really i would cool. i would love to see that up close and personal where do you, if they were to display it in america where do you think it would be displayed i mean i think i don't know if they do it in a mall because like maybe there's different you know cultural connotations and malls yeah. are more suburban but i can see maybe um los angeles or new york um yeah they did the big thing in new york for uh was that world of times world square of or yeah. yeah that's yeah so that would be maybe awesome. i can go back and visit it yeah maybe they'll yeah. do it at the museum of play that that could be something what? yeah that'd be awesome 
that'd be uh, guys i would i would i would film it for you i'd go in there and they'd be like man put the camera away I'd be like you put the <laughs> camera away but i'm really excited about it and i hope i hope it is something that i do get to see in person because it's such an amazing ex- exhibition it's not just oh here's a couple things and whatever it's yeah. a lot more than that and then this is now i all right i have weird feelings about this next topic uh warcraft movie trading cards were announced they're made by tops which is like yeah. the company that makes baseball cards and stuff. And I don't know about all this. Like, I can't decide if it's really cool or really cheesy. Thoughts? So I am not really a trading card person, so I'm just looking at this, and it was hard for me to see how it all came together. Like, so some of these cards, uh, they're showing um, pieces of props. Yeah. And to me, that's a little cheesy because I'm like, oh, I got some little square of some guy's armor that that seems a little sad but like it's not even a but the autographs is it, but yeah. isn't it just like a picture or is it actually like sandwiched in the card i thought it was sandwiched in the card okay. but now i'm not so sure i just don't know i just it seems so like they're not sports this isn't sports like i would have rather them been like oh here's like like a rehash of the WoW trading card game just for Warcraft movie and you yeah, get I stuff think that would be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm just not sure about all this. I wanna, I wanna like it because I'm obviously right. a collector of things. Yeah. I have many things, but I just, I'm not sure. Not sure. Yeah, I mean, I think some of the uh, information on the cards sounds cool, like character cards or, you know, character concept art or scene concept art. I would be but interested I in think concept I want, like, art cards. Yeah, I want, like, a mo- I want an actual art book, I think. Yeah. I, so I want to see that on the book, not, like, a little tiny card. Yeah, I don't know. It just, I'm not sure if we're the right audience. And I don't mean, right. like, me and you in particular, but even, like, Warcraft as a whole, I feel like I think of trading cards as something, like sort of for kids. I mean, that's not necessarily true, but I feel like that's the audience that that resonates with. Whereas they could sell yeah. a collectible art book for $100 and like you and I would buy it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe it's for different types of audiences. Like, you know, we're hardcore WoW people. We, we like, we want to have the, you know, super blown up picture, but if they're trying to reach everyone and this yeah. is a blockbuster, maybe, I don't know, mm-hmm. like, do blockbusters get trading cards? Like, I you know, are there Star Wars so. trading cards? No, I, I just know. want the bucket that popcorn comes in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I mean, the idea of it sounds kind of cool. I mean, there's going to be a hundred cards in this set, which seems like a lot. Um, apparently, yeah. there's going to be like a different colors. There's going to be like Alliance Blue, Horde Red. Then there's going to be like a Mage Light color and a Forge Gold color. There's going to be a set of base cards that all feature stills from the movie, but they'll also be autographs, like you said, relic cards, special chase cards, which I don't fully understand what that is, and then artist-drawn sketches, which I would be interested in the artist-drawn sketches. Right. Like, yes. That does it for me. Um, and then there's different types of cards, like you said, character cards, race cards, creature cards, groups and clans, and weapons, um, as well as combat cards, battle cards, the magic of Azeroth, character concept art, and scene concept art. And some of them include autographs, or it, it says pieces of props, so they must be like sandwiched in there. Yeah, I didn't see this announced on Battle.net, yeah. um, you know, yet, so I'm like, are they still refining the language? I mean, I got this straight from the Tops press release site, yeah. so maybe there is, like, special language that's targeted to collectors that those people would understand that I'm not as familiar with. Yeah, I don't know, because like I said, I was really into, like, the Warcraft trading card game. I have a lot of them, like, a lot, a lot. And I I, even have... same. I I like getting them because I like the in-game stuff you got. So maybe yeah. if this had in- in-game things I could get, that would be cool. Yeah, well, I, you, I don't think you can see it in my shop, but I have, like, um one of the collector's editions of, like, the Kalthos card. Yeah. It's all signed and everything. So, like, I was really into that, but those are all art, not photographs and i just feel like there's something very different about photographs but i'll give it a shot i'll see what they are and lord knows like even if i don't like them i'll probably end up with all of them anyways because that's just how i roll it's bad um okay and they're available on may 11th oh okay so before the movie comes out yep interesting interesting um okay so this next topic we're probably gonna have differing opinions on jay yep, jay, <laughs> jay actually direct messaged me on twitter and was like don't be mad <laughs> uh but crystallized fell is now available to purchase for 1250 valor and it's from the same npc that you buy a pexis stuff from in tanan um yeah yep so zudi fizzle furry and talador who's the person you can buy off-spec rings from, and Dawnseeker Krisek and Tanan, who was the Order of the Awakened 
um, quartermaster. Mm -hmm. And you can only purchase these when that character has finished the legendary quest line, so you have to do all the quests and, you know, Light's Blessing or whatever the Horde one is and go to uh, Nagrand, and then you can see them on the vendor. You can buy multiple crystallized fell at once, mm -hmm. and you can earn close to 5,000 Valor per week, so if you, uh, you know, max out on Valor, you can nearly get four upgrades and then plus the one from Archimonde on normal or higher. And what Crystallized Fell actually does, it upgrades your finalized legendary ring three item levels at a time up to item level 795, so you need 20 of them to fully max out a ring. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so if you're earning close to 5k Valor a week, um, that is, uh, you know, easier than it sounds because um, earning that much Valor is time consuming, like not every activity is equal, so you might do a group yeah. of Mythic Dungeons with friends, but then if you try to do every single LFR for a small amount, that sounds kind of painful, or, you know, the Arena weekly quest for 500, so yeah. it's still most efficient to do Archimonde and then, you know, maybe one activity like Mythic Dungeons with your friends and, yeah, okay. bounce it out. All right, let me get all my feelings out, and then, okay, so... I have issues with this for a few reasons. Number one, the next expansion is six months away. We don't need these nerfs already. I think these, I think the Valor upgrade was just kind of like a soft nerf to Hellfire Citadel because it kind of makes everybody have a higher item level, so it makes everything a little easier. Also, for people who do raid, that's a new mandatory thing you have to do. Like on top of your raids and on top of your gems and enchants, you now have to have everything Valor upgraded two out of two or else you're kind of not giving it your all. Now, anybody who doesn't have the upgraded ring is expected to go earn their max valor every week to upgrade their ring, even if their guild has killed it, like my guild. Like, my ring is only two weeks from being upgraded, and everyone's like, oh, why don't you just go do the valor? I don't want to freaking do the valor. Like, that, that, that does sound painful to me. Like, I did the valor to upgrade my gear, which I feel like was kind of a, a dumb force thing to do. I think that, like, you're only a little bit, you're only, like, marginally better for the amount of time that you really put into doing it. And I just, I don't want to feel, like, forced to go rush upgrade my ring when that wasn't how this entire thing was structured from the get-go. I feel like the idea of upgrading the ring in the beginning was to really set apart, like, these are raiders that are killing Archimond a lot, whereas these are people that are doing LFR, which is fine. I don't think there's a bad, I don't think it's bad to have a difference between people who really put a lot of time and effort into something. Not to say that LFR isn't time and effort, but it's definitely different. And, I, I mean, I like the idea of having a catch-up mechanic for alts, but I feel, or not alts, but for, like, your off-spec. Like, I really like that idea, but I kind of still feel like the ring should have just changed spec when you changed spec. I kind of don't think you should have to yeah. have two rings in the first place. Right. that really deters you from playing an off-spec, and then, like, if somebody plays, say, like, a, a warrior, so I don't, I just feel like there's so many, like, a mage, a mage is not going to be forced in their guild to go do all of this extra work because they play a mage, whereas, like, I play a, a resto shaman, so if I want to play elemental, I now have to go earn 5k valor a week for the next month or else I will never be chosen to play elements. I just, I feel like it's too early for this kind of nerf. Right, so these are these are my thoughts, and like you said, they're different, but I do understand what you're saying, and I was thinking of maybe some other in-between solutions. So yeah. I think that the like I think the players that do benefit from these are players that are skilled at multiple specs, but a lack of a good ring, ring means that they won't necessarily be chosen to play their yeah. off spec over, you know, other main spec, you know, healers or tanks. Mm -hmm. Now there's other problems like you don't want a guild to be so obsessed with gear that they'll say, oh, well, your ring's good, but your off-spec doesn't have gear that's perfectly upgraded. But I do think that because the rings are so powerful that this can help people yeah. in that situation. Um, there's also players that want to try out an alt in raids without underperforming. So, like, maybe you really hate your class in Legion based on what you've read and you want to try out another class. And hopefully this can help you up so you don't feel that maybe, you know, if you're not doing great DPS, um, you can, you, at least if your yeah, ring is yeah. good, you can be like, oh, well, like, I need to play better. I can't just blame it on my gear. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's also, um, if you're a new player that wants to join a guild, um, this can improve your chances of doing well or showing that you are dedicated. Absolutely. Um, so I think that in that case, like, it can, like, you don't want to be in a position where people are going to, like, be annoyed with you for not 
um, maxing out one week and having a ring be seven, I don't know, 89 versus 792. But yeah. if you haven't rated it at all, I think it does show dedication that if yeah. you can't get into a rig, you're doing everything you can. Yes. And then finally, if you, with the holidays, you know, we missed a few episodes of Wowhead Weekly. I'm sure there is raiders that have missed uh, several weeks of Archimon kills. So, you know, maybe it's nice to have that option where people can catch up and not feel punished for taking holidays. And, like, if you're in a guild that wants to focus on Heroic and you're sharding everything from Arkhamon, but you're just doing that for the Crystallized Fell, maybe this can cut out some of that yeah. annoying farm. So I think there are pros and cons to that. And something I was thinking of is, you know, if the I, I think that the worst sort of, well, not worst case, but a scenario that feels less helpful or more in between is that if you acquire your ring through LFR and have no plans to raid seriously and if you have tons of valor, um, that person has benefited the most from that and it doesn't encourage them to actually raid. So maybe maybe, maybe you should have the normal time as a flat circle achievement to, to be an extra requirement to unlock this oh, from yeah. the vendor. So, you know, you can finish the ring, but you should also be encouraged to at least see what it's like on normal before you can access all of these extra upgrades. Because you're, if you're just doing LFR, you don't need like a perfectly yeah. maxed up ring. Well, it's it's funny because you said that, and one of my thoughts of what a requirement should have been is you should have already had to have a maxed out, out ring, whether it just be on your entire account. But like, I just feel like, I don't know, 20 Archimon kills is a lot of work. And like to just kind of have that not a lot of work. <laughs> like, <laughs> I also feel that um, when I'm thinking about the grinding going into Valor. Oh, that it's also a lot of work. Yeah. I mean, maybe Blizzard's trying to break the mindset that you have to max everything out. Like, maybe it's like, I hey, see, I thought you should do dungeons with your friends as I opposed the, to killing yourself in LFR. I thought the and very just be happy opposite of two that. Versus four. Okay. I thought with the timing of all of this, right? Like, with the timing of Crystallized Fell coming out, I thought it was like, oh, all the mythic and like end gear heroic raiders are now maxed out on all their gear and are no longer running mythic dungeons so now here's another reason that they have to run mythic dungeons to benefit everyone else in the community to get really like high level high eye level players in those groups yeah i mean that that's just really interesting how we view two different ways because i was just like hey if you know if people i was thinking this more that people would realize that running high mall lfr to upgrade their ring was maybe not worth it and that we yeah. should move thinking that you can get like full best and slot and full this if you just yeah you know put your mind to it but you know it's uh it was very unexpected to see it pop up earlier this week and it's just been live for a few days so i'll be curious if there's any changes made um based on if they think player behavior is going off the walls with these upgrades or not I just feel like it will be. I feel like like my guild already, like I said, my guild isn't a super serious. We do not consider ourselves hardcore, but like during we took a two week break for Christmas and, and New Year's and everybody was expected like you don't get a raid spot if you didn't upgrade your gear in that two weeks. Like that two weeks, you had all the time before that and now you've got two weeks of no raids. There's no excuse why you should show up to raid, not everything two out of two. Well, now here's this new reason that we all have to go grind out Valor. It just seems like... It's it's almost like people say, oh, there's nothing to do in WoW. Like you hear people say that all the time, which is right. so bizarre to me because there's so much. It to feels do like in some WoW. people think there's nothing to do, and other people think that they have to do every single little thing. And maybe it would be neat if I mean I don't know if Blizzard can do this, but if there was, I don't know, like math or statistics or stuff, just proving that hey, if you upgrade this a little, it's good for the time invested, but like. You, you know, if you're spending 30 hours a week doing this, this does not yeah, necessarily mean you'll kill a boss. Or, you yeah. know, like, your DPS increased by 0.001%. But if yeah, you that was my were point. alive longer in the fight, yeah. that would make up more of that DPS. Yeah, I totally So I think we just totally need more agree. of that. I just feel like it just felt like as someone who, like like I said, like my guild required everybody to be two out of two. It just felt like, oh, here's another thing that's going to be... Like, no, I'll never get chosen. Not that I want to get chosen to play Elemental. Right. Let me just get it straight. But I will never get chosen now because there will be someone who will go and grind all that out when, like, I've never missed a raid. So I'm only one or two weeks from being maxed out. And then I was just going to start my Elemental ring. I don't yeah. know. I just... I, I have... also feel like, you know, they're sort of in a hard position where I think when this Legendary quest line all started, it was easier to catch up. 
And now with the legendary procs and how they scale, it's like, whoa, this one spec can really run away from your off specs. Yeah. Like, now they've got a problem and they have to well, fix it in some way. I have weird feelings about the legendary ring and the legendary cloak anyways. I feel like it's not as legendary as it is mandatory. Like, when people used to get, like, Terragosa's Wrath, is that what I was Oh, called? yeah, no, I, I agree that it's changed. Like, epic and legendary mean different things than yeah. they used to. Absolutely, because I feel like when people used to do, like, you know, Fangs and the Father and all those quests, like, I feel like, or Shadowmourne, it was, like, this really huge accomplishment that maybe one person in your entire guild did. No one was forced or expected. It was, like, really cool if they did it, but nobody was expected to go above and beyond like that. But, like, my guild is guilty of it as well. Like, we wouldn't even consider someone that didn't have a 735 ring. Not saying it has to be upgraded, because right. we understand that, yeah. like, well, now it probably will. But, <laughs> but like, it's it's not a legendary ring. It's a mandatory ring. It's so much more powerful than anything else. And you can get it through LFR that, like, there's absolutely kind of no excuse with all the catch-up mechanics and everything to not have it and be apping for a raid guild. Yeah. Like, that's not really But when it fun. changed from being, like, one person at a time worked on it to everyone can work on it, that really changed a lot of things. Yeah. Um, I mean, there were definitely downsides if, you know, you were trying to be in a progress guild at the time of, you know, who will be the one person that's chosen to get this? Yeah. And what if they leave? And I know that people at top levels would do all sorts of elaborate alt runs so every single caster could get, you know, a Dragon Wrath. Yeah. But, I mean, it feels like that effect is now trickling down. You know, people see the color legendary and think that it must be mandatory and, you know, you kind must do is. everything. I, like, don't want I don't want to be that person who's like, oh, it's the best thing ever. But really, if you compare it, if you compare the DPS of two equally geared people and one of them has a ring and one of them doesn't, like that person is always going to be ahead of the other one. And it, it just, it just, it kind of took away, like, Legendary used to be this thing that was like, oh, man, that's so cool. No one has that. You worked so hard for that. To this thing that, like, just everybody has to have. It's not, it's just mandatory. And I feel like in making these upgrades obtainable by grinding and farming, it just makes grinding and farming mandatory, which I guess is fine. Like, I, we've had a little bit of that in every expansion, and maybe that's what people love so much about vanilla, but I just feel like... I feel like I already put a lot of hard work into WoW, and, like, all this is going to do is encourage people of, like, my level and higher, more higher than my level, really. Like, I, I'm not... A lot of people saying, like, oh, Panzer brags or Panzer's an Elias. I'm not an Elias. Like, my guild is not good. Like, 90% of our raid is fart jokes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, don't think it's like that. But I know that if my guild is taking this so seriously and being like, oh, we should all grind this out and we should all be two out of two upgraded, like, it's not really benefiting the people who, like, I feel like Blizzard does this. They're like, oh, it's going to help people who are behind catch up. No, it's going to be a bunch of crazy mythic raiders who already spend 30, 40 hours a week on all this stuff now just spending another extra time yeah. to get upgraded. I, mean, I feel that's like that's an interesting question because, like, I think that there's good intentions. Yeah. And if we're if the issue is that the community will always panic about you know max level stat food or you know upgrading something five item levels. Like maybe a bigger question is how what can Blizzard do to change this mindset if people are picking like the path of least fun or taking yeah. something that is helpful and twisting it into like how do you take something that doesn't have to be mandatory and how does it have the perception that it is mandatory well i mean because you yeah. just if you're in a guild that's like really trying to push right. and progress i mean you obviously want to take the people who are you know the best geared and the best enchanted and the best skilled and right but maybe it should be like there's more i feel like most of this is on like gear and you know like you said gear and enchants and gems and warforge but there's not as many they're, like, Blizzard and just the content should emphasize the skill more, I feel, so yeah. it's not, like... Oh, God, people be awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, just because, like, there's, I don't, you know, it's not fun when people are like, oh, well, my eye level isn't good, or I don't have this item. Like, just all these reasons that's not actually about you playing the game how you want on your yeah. character. And, you know, now Legion has this whole idea of the class fantasy. Like, you know, it should be about you as a class, not you as, oh, I have to get this item or else well or, i'm no, already right scared of legion honestly because of the artifact weapon it's the same exact problem with the ring only in a in a weapon which is well we don't know how you get 
any of the power yet. Like, yeah, I mean, we kind of do. I mean, you know that if I, you know it's going to be whoever spends the most time is going. to... I mean, I'm I'm hoping that they'll. I, do it, like, I mean, mine's in, capped on the alpha. Like I I cannot. Yeah. I I have like a thousand spare artifact power when yeah. the alpha shut down. Like I could not spend it. On yeah, and I hope that they cap it like that on live realms. I really do. That's how they did in hate when Halo Five came out. You could purchase these huge rec packs. They cost you like yeah. thirty, forty, fifty dollars, but they didn't let you open them all at once because there were yeah, things I mean, that you could I think get. That could yeah. So it's like if they let you grind out the artifact power, fine. But, you know, I, I really hope that they do cap it so that it doesn't encourage people to just. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> go, mean, like go, I, go. I said 104 and I could only unlock maybe like six ranks of something. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like, oh, you know, you have to unlock every single rank before your first raid. Like, it, it didn't work that way. So I'm Good. hoping I that hope it doesn't. Over. Although, and, and I hope that you can also earn enough artifact power to cap out both of your specs. Or, God, three of your specs now. Yeah, like, that stuff isn't supported at all on the alpha yet. Yeah. I mean, like, I could only be an outlaw rogue. <laughs> like, that was, mm -hmm. like, you know, too bad. So, um... Yeah, I, I don't know when the alpha's yeah. coming back up. Like, we don't know when the pre-patch is, but there's a lot more work that has to go into it. Like, you know, we were just talking about how we did this big artifact calculator on Wildhood, but there's so many unknowns and stuff that I want to add to the calculator that I just can't, can't yet. Like, yeah. I don't know how costs totally work beyond the initial, you know, yeah. setup we have now. Like, or, yeah, there's a lot of variables and they did talk about wanting there to be catch-up mechanisms for all with the artifact weapons, so maybe they will be learning from the legendary um, quest lines. So, you know, we'll see. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see where it's going. I just hope it's not a case like the ring is, where you know, at, until right now, if you played two specs, you were in a very odd position because you couldn't, you literally couldn't earn enough fell. Crystallized. Fell, crystallized fell to yeah. upgrade both rings. Uh, although I still I still stand firm that I feel like the rings should have respect. I don't know why they didn't. Like I don't know if it's like maybe there was a tech issue. I mean I just knowing how some items yeah. work just work differently. Um yeah, or maybe maybe just is this thing where like you know how like when they test PvP on the beta or you know PTR, there's it's just very different how, you know, Ashran was very controlled with all these excited PvPers, then it went to live servers and it didn't work exactly as intended. Yeah. Maybe in a very controlled test environment, the legendary ring was just different than how it played out. Yeah, um, and I understand over. that. I mean, I'm certainly no game developer, yeah. but uh, while we're on the topic of Valor, yeah, of nostalgia. this yeah. week, <laughs> this Valor and Nostalgia, this week yeah. is Northern Time Walking. It runs, it's got three more days left. It runs through the 11th, yeah. and there are six different instances. You can run uh, ha -ha, on Cahet, <laughs> I think I, I think it did good, Gunjack, yeah. Halls of Lightning, The Nexus, Utgard Pinnacle, Pit of Saron, uh, which is new. Also, <laughs> people are so bad at time walking, it's shocking. Shocking. Mythic dungeons are easier than time walking, I swear to God. I was in a group with the most shockingly bad tank the other day. It was awful. Like, I'm not a rage quitter, and it was just... What are interrupts? What is CC? Silences? Those don't exist. It was awful. The really funny thing is that more people will look up, like heroic and mythic dungeon guys on wowhead than they will our time walking guides and i keep hearing like oh my god people don't know the instance of their wiping it's like well, people aren't looking up these guides yeah. so they seem to know what they're doing well they i think they think because yeah. the eye level is so low there i feel yeah. like the rewards for time walking honestly should be i think they're harder than getting what do you get 675s i swear yeah. to god they're they're harder than mythics i feel like they should drop equivalent loot to mythic dungeons because they're maybe they're... it's the scaling like with mythic like your gear gets better so yeah. they get easier but in time walking your gear stays the same yeah. and i know some people for fun like to make weird time walking sets like oh this trinket from dragon soul if you yeah. scale it down to wrath it's awesome but you know your average person is not going to do all of that yeah i should do that it was i was terrible it was terrible i still got to do mine this week i was waiting to go with guildies because not never again will i like that guy I think the the ironic part of the whole thing is his name was unkillable. But that, <laughs> but that guy, you yeah. ruined pug time walking for me. It was awful. But uh, the rewards that are not gear related, the vanity rewards for time walking are awesome. Because, of course, out of yep. a guard pinnacle, you can get the mount. You can also get uh, the ironbound wrath charger for, or ironbound wraith charger for spending your badges. And that is a... That's yep. an awesome mount. He is awesome. He's so, so cool. And he flies... He's so Wrath of the Lich King looking. I love it I know. so much. He's super, super cool. Uh, but there's a lot of awesome rewards from Time Walking. Toys and disguises and... 
Yeah, the other mount, which um, you can't, uh, it's, you know, RNG, but you can get the infinite time reaver yeah. mount. If you, um, it's personal loot, it can drop from any boss, um, you know, pretty low chance, but eventually you'll get it. I haven't maybe. seen anybody with yeah. it yet. I've seen a few people with them. Dedicated. Um, but yeah, maybe they're so not, maybe that's just really very awesome lucky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, we have a comment. Someone's like, oh my God, this is my first try. And someone's like, I've done 200 tries. I hate you. Uh, at least you don't have to roll because, yeah, my, that rolling causes drama. I've been telling you guys lately that my sister just started playing WoW and it was my sister and her husband started playing WoW at the same time. He ran Karazhan twice, two times, and he got the mount. Oh, I've lucky. never seen that drop. I've probably oh, that run reminds Carol. me of my garrison mission. Run my river back to spawn. So I've never gotten that. that. I've never gotten cold fist either. I bought cold fist because I got sick of waiting. I, I did. I, yeah, I did that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But, but yeah, speaking of valor from before, um, <laughs> if you do the quest a frozen path in time, uh, it always would give you a chest with hellfire mm -hmm. normal gear and the seal of fate for Hellfire Citadel rules, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but now it also gives you 500 Valor, so if you do five time walking uh, instances, um, that is a pretty good uh, reward. And don't forget that mm -hmm. at the very first time walking uh, dungeon you clear, you get this unstable prism, which gives you 500, 500 time badges, warp badges, yeah. which is really good if you want to just put it aside for the expensive things, or if you're a new character, there's some um, high gear. levels. Yeah, it's really yeah. cheap. So you can, like, just buy all that. You can like, buy it with just doing one yeah. time walking instance. You can buy every yeah. piece of actual gear. Just make sure you don't buy it until you're actually level 100. Exactly. Because it's, it's pretty good at level 100, though. Like, 675 is decent. So yeah. it's definitely worth grabbing at level 100 if you're on an all. That's for or slots that are kind of annoying, like, you know, trinkets or... I yeah. think there's even weapons, so... Yeah, I think my sister has a bow or a crossbow on her hunter, so yeah, it's definitely... And time walking's a fun time. I just... It was really... It's really rough to pug. It really I think is. it's really fun if you do it with friends that played at that time. Yeah. Because you just sort of reminisce and you're like, oh, I was bad at this and I'll just steamroll through it now. But yeah, pugs is really tricky, especially... You could get paired with people that are at max level, so maybe like they don't really know how to play their class that well or it's their first character as well. Yeah, it's... I, it's, I really feel like the, none of them are that bad. Pit Seron was particularly bad. Like, I don't think the other instances are... Pitiseron... Well, Pitiseron was harder at the time anyways. Right. So and I don't know if they scaled it like the very first time, that. it was in the time-walking rotation, yeah. so I feel that, um, you know, sort of like, oh, like, how do we do this ramp pull? And... I wonder if they'll change the eye level scaling. I feel like they did that with um, end time. They yeah. hotfixed that in because that was the one that came at the end of the expansion and dropped better loot. Yeah. So I'm fine that you had better gear. So, you know, we'll see. Um, so. that one thing brutal. that's really cool about Pit of Sauron is that it could drop the Battered Hilt, which was a pretty neat quest line. And you got this reward that looked really cool for transmog. So... You know, keep an eye out for that. If you see it drop, it's something that's very cool that you should pick up and use for wardrobe in Legion. Yep, yep. But it's not... Okay, I'm sorry if I traumatized anyone. It's not as bad as I have made it sound, I swear. It's not that bad. <laughs> um, oh, there's some new Wowhead site features, too. Like, yeah, transition, transition, transition. <laughs> um, and I was going to make a video of this, but I couldn't I couldn't get it to work. Like, I, I when it was oh, recording, no. it was recording, like, the background. It wasn't you. It was on my okay. end. I, think I, I was, like, kind of getting, like, oh, God. No, no, no. <laughs> it was, like, recording, like, my desktop background instead oh, of... No. The actual, I don't know, I don't know, who knows. But anyways, you can now view all the artifact weapon 3D models on Wowhead. Yay! Yay! <laughs> They're super cool. They're all really cool. Although, I just I still don't know how I feel about the Resto Shaman one. I wish it was cooler. Yeah, I feel like the Resto Shaman one, I thought they said at some point it wasn't going to be called the Scepter of Ashara. So, we need that name to be changed. Oh. <laughs> You know, like, that That still needs to be moving along. Um, I don't know. Wanna... I don't like... The, I, I know it's dumb, and I know I'm a shaman, and I should get over it, but I really don't want to use a shield. I re All my transmogs, all my favorite transmogs are for offhands. And every expansion, unless you're in PvP, it's never mattered if you used an offhand instead of a shield. And I, they need to either make it so you can transmog a shield into an offhand if you play a caster... Or I think that would be a good idea. With an offhand, it's so... It's like, I don't understand why a hunter can transmog a bow yeah. into a gun into a crossbow... Also, like, Holy Paladins, their, quote, shield is a book, so they could use, they could transmog over the book to, to a traditional shield, but their actual artifact off, like, offhand looks like an offhand book, so they can get the best of, you know, 
both appearance styles. Blizzard, please. So, yeah. Blizzard, so, please. Yeah, in addition to the uh, weapon models, we also have the Feral and Guardian Druid they form. Have the coolest artifacts yeah. in the game. Ice Bear and like. So cool. Like, cat. Tree cat, yeah, they're all yeah. super, super cool. So, so cool. Like the, they worked so. I, f- I almost feel bad for boomkins because, like, if I was a boomkin, I would want an artifact you know, boomkin form. I want to be a super owl. Yeah, I mean, I, uh, well, the reasoning will be that the boomkins, you can actually see your your transmog on the weapon. But yeah, definitely would be cool if you could be like a spectral I feel like boomkin, boomkin or are always getting the kid. short end of the stick. Well, at least they got the new models. Yeah, they look really good yeah. too. They look really good. I put a I put a video of the new Boomkin models up on Wowhead's Facebook page because it seems like people really like the short videos on Facebook. Yeah, they get a lot of views and a lot of shares, whereas people don't really go to YouTube to watch like a thirty second video. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like it's it's hit or miss. Like I'll put something up and people will love, it, and other people are like, oh, like here's a video of the same class, you know, just different models. And they're like, nah, we don't like this one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely worth going and checking out if you want to go see your class or another class. Like I said, I really think the Druid ones are worth looking at. They're very fun. They're very, very yeah. fun. And you can find this if you go to the Artifact Calculator. There is now a tab at the bottom where you can switch between picking all your traits and looking at the appearances. So all you have to do is click on Appearances, or if you go to the Legion version of the dressing room, if you type in the name of the weapon, um, when you go to click on it, it, when you would usually click on the weapon to replace it, there's now a new option called, I think it's Reforge Appearance, because that's what it is in game, and it lets you choose between all the styles and tints. So over the vacation, I did, I did a bunch of transmog articles previewing yeah, all did. the styles and tints, and you know having some suggestions on like what iconic tier set matched colors. So. If you're not sure where to get started, you know, definitely scroll back and check all of those out. And yeah, uh, it's really fun in the dressing room. You can also preview stuff on Demon Hunters, which is super cool. (laughs) Yeah, and while we're on the topic of artifact weapons, I'm going to let you go ahead and talk about relic improvements. And then I feel like the wardrobe wardrobe quest tool is also your area of expertise. So take it away, Perk. All right. So um, on a more technical note, we did a bunch of stuff with relic improvements. And if you're not sure what they are, they are gems for your artifact weapon. They give you a rank of a trait, even if you haven't unlocked that yet with artifact power. And you can socket three total if you have maxed everything out at 110 and done some special quest line or content. Um, We decided to make these easier to browse because no one really knows what relic does yet. So on the calculator, we've included their descriptions on tooltips. So if you're browsing this list and you're like, well, you know, holy gem, what does holy gem do? It now tells you that it, you know, improves a, t- a trait and the trait does this specific thing. So we hope that's easier to look at. Um, we also added better relic graphics around sockets. And so, like, if you have a blood relic and now has this gigantic red circle around it, um, so it's always there. You don't have to, like, mouse over. It just is always there reminding you that you have put, you know, a relic into this socket. And they look pretty cool. They're very artistic. I like playing around with them. <laughs> and finally, we have Legion database filters for all of the relic colors. So you can filter by, like, iron relics or blood relics or, you know, weapons that have a relic versus don't have a relic. So all of that is up to speed. And... Yeah, I'm sure that the next alpha build will change relics even further, but we're all up to date on that stuff. And for the wardrobe tool, I feel like I should talk about this, but this is something that you are really excited about, it's too. It's so cool. Because it's transmog. So. It <laughs> um, so in Legion, a really cool thing about transmog and wardrobe is that you automatically get um, all appearances from your already completed quest, including um, rewards that you have deleted. So we made this initial wardrobe tool to help you keep track of the, the appearances from current quests that you might have deleted already. Okay. So you know what you still need to get in the meantime and what you already have that you would have forgotten about. But I feel like it's worth noting that if you play a male or a plate character, yeah, it's alarming. <laughs> <laughs> like if you play a plate character, you're getting a bunch of extra stuff. And if you play a male character, you're getting like kicked to the curb. Yeah, so, um, I'm not, was this part of, was this after? No, I think we, I don't 
no, I talked about it in a video. I don't know if we talked about it this time, but basically the TLDR of the situation is that in Legion, you can wear plate at level one. Whereas right now you can't wear plate until like level what, like 40. Yeah. So right now in the entire database of gear, there's only like one plate item under level 40, but in Legion, there's like hundreds. Right? Yeah, and they did yeah, and they did that. They didn't create new plate items. They took yeah. some of the local mail items that were like yeah. strength and they changed all that to plate. So some appearances you might really like as mail. Yeah, like glimmering are mail. Not, yeah. Glimmering that, that, mail is plate. That, yeah, glimmering plate. The scarlet set is now plate. So you know, like the, this if you're a mail or a plate loser user, you might want to check this did out. Did you just call me a mail loser? Rude. <laughs> <laughs> oh mail <male> shot. <laughs> I am sorry. <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, you should check it out just to make sure that you're going to be some upset. Artifact. If you are yeah. if you're a play character, you're going to be like, "Yay!" If you're a male character, you're going to be like, "No." I feel like Blizzard should let all male users who already have it keep it. But then it's like legacy gear that you can't get anymore. Yeah, either that or there should be like male versions of plate stuff because some of this weirdness came about because like there are male and plate items right now that look identical. Yeah. So it's like, well, if they've already done that, if they're okay kind of blending these low-level appearances. I just think, like, think about yeah. people who have had, like, Glimmering Mail came out in vanilla. Yeah, and also the Scarlet set, that stuff is expensive. Yeah. Like, people love, like, finding that, and you can't get that for a few years. And, you know, there are guides on Wowhead specifically about how to get the Scarlet set and RP a member of the Scarlet Crusade. Like, people are hardcore about that. No, so. I know. Well, literally, I'm so upset about Glimmering Mail. Like, I'm not over it. I won't be over it. Both my Shaman and my Hunter have the full set of Glimmering Mail because I wow. like it better than the Blood Knight. Yeah. So, like, right. I'm not happy about this. I'm very angry. I would like to write a strongly worded letter. I want it notarized, signature required <laughs> upon delivery so I know that they got it. <laughs> and it'll be like in Harry Potter, like when you open the letter and it starts actually yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it. I'm so upset about this. It's not upsetting if you're a paladin. If you're a paladin, I feel like this is something paladins have wanted, particularly yeah, paladins. paladins. Like, oh, sweet. I can be a scroll and crusade person now. Yeah, screw you're you guys. I'm very upset about it. Anyway, so if you use the wardrobe quest tool that's on Wowhead and you play a male character, you're going to be a little bit a taken back. Um, now, mind you, this only is for quest gear. It doesn't, none of your gear will be recovered if you deleted it. So, like, theoretically, if you had quest gear that you deleted, it will show up still in your Legion wardrobe because Blizzard yeah. has record of you completing that quest, but Blizzard doesn't have record of you looting every random piece of gear ever. So don't go deleting things. Um, yeah, like, and, don't delete your tier gear, or, you know, dungeon yeah. gear, or, mm -hmm. like, just... Hold on to all that stuff. Yeah. Um, another thing I wanted to mention is that a lot of people are asking about, you know, does this tool cover your entire account? And we don't really know how account-wide um, quest appearances work in Legion because Blizzard has said some things, but on the actual alpha, different types of quests are handled differently. And yeah, and the other... It's kind of contradictory, so we're just sort of holding off, and it's like see what this particular character will get from their quest that they have completed. I, and saw, we'll a, I saw a blue tweet that said that the way the account, and I'm not, I'm not, don't quote me on this. This is just my current understanding of it, is that the way that account-wide stuff will work is that if you complete a quest, you'll only get the gear that's for your character. So, like, every quest has four pieces of gear. You right. only get the piece of gear that that character could equip. And that doesn't mean that Plate can just get everything. Plate will only get the Plate right. piece, right? But the problem is that, like, Plate was getting everything on the Alpha. So Yeah, well, I, I assumed that that was just the Alpha being screwed up because they clarified yeah, no, I that in a tweet. Yeah, too. And but I just, I like can't really, well, the I didn't other want to like issue, make it based on that. The it. other issue is that we can't really test that on the alpha because you can't make characters on the alpha. You can only right. make <laughs> new characters. Yeah. Because people kept asking me like, how does transmog work? Can you transmog bunny ears? I don't know because I can't, I can't access a character that has bunny ears unlocked. Right. <laughs> I yeah, hope I so. Like the character <laughs> There's I so many think... random items there too that are on the transmog UI yeah. that are definitely not going to be there. Like, appearances for things that never made it to the game Come, so well, maybe they'll just make it now <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know i know people are really excited about wardrobe and they want this tool to do everything and it can't I... do everything right now but it's a really good start 
Yeah, so, okay, so I just really, really want them to stop having stupid transmog restrictions. Like, why make all these cool vanity items for holidays and then be like, you can't... Like, I, everybody would transmog the gaudy Christmas sweater during Christmas. Why can't we do that? I know, why? I think... They've moved some items recently. I think the Dark Moon finery set is all cosmetic, and the just make Midsummer it all Festival cosmetic. helmet is. So. Yeah. Okay, so the Midsummer Festival helmet is, but then, like, the bunny ears aren't. Like you can, I know. And it's dumb, because they're like, oh, well, we don't want you to look ridiculous. I can have a fish as my main hand and a fish as my offhand. I know. Don't tell me you don't want me to look ridiculous. because Right, plus some transmog um, no, artifact variations look really you know, funny and out there, like, um, you know, like the fiery Ashbringer, like, suppose you were this watery paladin that's neon blue and you have this fiery orange main hand, like, that, that, that's just bad Well, in, or, like, the rainbow BC sets, like, yeah, all the pieces exactly. of BC yeah. gear that do not have full sets of gear, so you, you just look ridiculous, yeah. like, I don't know, I just, just let me transmog the stuff I earned. I want to have the red rose, like, I think the stupid, like, yeah, red, the rose red rose from Valentine's really classy. Day. Yeah, you could put that with almost anything and it would look cool. Or, like, my my number one gripe of things I can't transmog is the fumigators, the vile fumigators mask. Yeah, that would be really cool. What the heck? That could go with so many cool rogue transmogs. Like, they're basically just huffing poison the whole time. I don't know. I'm into it. So, I'm really... I don't. I mean, I'm not saying to let, like, clothies wear, like, transmog plate or anything. I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of things right now that people use as RP items that should just be cosmetic. Yeah, so I think that, I mean, it's cool that they actually created the cosmetic category. Yeah. So maybe it's a matter of just figuring out how to convert items over to that category. Mm -hmm. So I'm optimistic. Like, they've made some items cosmetic. You know, there was a start with some holiday items. There's actually a cosmetic item from, um, I want to say the skinning in Legion uh, quest reward. It's cosmetic. So hopefully we'll see more, not less. Yeah. Okay. One last, one last complaint. The Christmas hat is actually really hard to get, and you can't transmog that either. You know what yeah. would be cool if they You know, the yeah, why Christmas items? complaint? Like, why was there no Christmas Pepe? Right! Like, we needed a Christmas Pepe. He is yeah. very sad. Like, Father Winter Pepe, Pepe with, like, a little beard and the hat and everything. Yeah. Yeah, so... Great Father Pepe. Winter Pepe. I agree. Um, I hope that they do something with Pepe and Legion. I hope that when we're running on Legion, know. we find him somewhere and he's, like... I hope they carry that on. It's, like, disappointing how much they added to Garrison's, like, kind of too late. Like, uh, like Halloween decorations and Wintervale decorations. Like, those were so cool, and, like, we did, we're not even going to get to use them for two years. Yeah, I wish, I mean, I wish there was just a cool area that you could show that wasn't tied to Drainer, and you could be like, hey, here's my little corner, and I decorated it this way, and I have my Pepe here, and I have my little night elf building here, and I've got these guards that cheer me on, and here's my archaeology hall. Like, yeah. that's the stuff is, I want all the personalized stuff to stay and take that with me. It's like, yeah, I like the idea of a garrison, I just don't like how much mandatory stuff was tied to the garrison. But I think I would still right. hang out in a garrison, like, I don't know, I might still go to my garrison. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I need to get some rare quests, or, yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe... Just go back and do the pet menagerie. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Theaters of Drainer, yeah. We, I'm proud of us. We went a whole hour today, despite us saying our notes were so thin. Wow. Good for us. Yay. So I think we're, I think we're about ready to wrap it up. Did you have anything else you needed to add? Um, we did a cool post today on artifact offhands and shields, which a lot of people apparently didn't know about. Like, we previewed them in November, but there was so much news. So, yeah. you know, check that out today because I was surprised. There was, like, a series of blue tweets highlighting offense. So I'm like, oh, whatever, I'll just feature these. And people are, like, very interested in them. So, you know, check that out. Artifact weapons that are, like, you know, fire mage main hands or paladins or shaman yep. they come with matching cool looking things so check that out yeah definitely worth checking out and i think it's definitely worth checking out all of the transmog posts that were over the holidays as well because it features like the class hall and wowhead has videos now on their uh youtube of all the class halls most of the artifact weapons um there's a lot of stuff from legion alpha up on the wowhead channel so make sure you check that out and yep. I think I think that's all. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to everybody who subscribes to our Twitch channel. We really appreciate it. You get to use cute little emotes. And Perk, did you see our little badge is working? Look, Perk. I know that is very cool. It's, a little rocket. Yeah, that's I added cool. that today. I'm really excited. Yay. We, I believe very we're happy. right now 12 subscribers from getting a new emote, and I think we're gonna do an Illidan, uh, Illidan rocket, like an Illidan rocket. 
So, yeah, and uh, thank yep. you to everybody who subscribes to Wowhead Premium. Of course, that is a service that will take all of the ads off of your Wowhead. It'll allow you to customize your Today in Draenor, track quests, have a special color when you're typing, all that kind of good stuff. And thanks to everybody who just watches our stuff and follows us on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook and all, all those good pieces. things. We appreciate yep. it. And um, we'll be back next week, same bat time, same bat channel. We stream Wowhead Weekly live every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. That's 3 p.m. Pacific. And then we upload it to YouTube within 24 hours. So we are going to go. I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend. And thank you once again for joining us. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.